London After Midnight is a 1927 film. It is also an American film that stars Lon Chaney. And it is lost. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing is that even though it is lost, it still has a legacy. There have been attempts to restore and give an idea of what the movie looked like. And um, with the publicity stills that we have and the lobby cards and everything else, uh, Turner Classic Movies even uh, made a, uh, they did a restoration process of some kind. Yeah, they, they uh, had somebody uh, do some kind of reconstruction work to, to do something. I, I remember when that happened, that was like back in 2002. There was also um, uh, something in 1985, and um, that was with MGM. And then in 2016, somebody wrote a book about the different reconstructions of um, London After Midnight. So, I mean, even with this movie being lost, it has quite the fan base and people are hoping that a copy of it is somewhere in an attic somewhere <laughs> I, i'm i'm one of those people um now the movie is actually based on a book called the hypnotist and actually the uh title of the movie was supposed to go out as the hypnotist but it was changed so, um, and the author of the book was a director and a producer, um, or he was just a director. Um, no, he was both. Um, so Todd Browning uh, worked on the movie. He was also the author. And um, so when it comes to Lon Chaney's look with the jagged teeth, and and everything else now he had a specific look Lon Chaney is a man of a thousand faces we all know this and the thing about this particular look that he had we've seen the pictures and uh he had um the sharpened teeth and the hypnotic eye look he had wire fittings that he wore like monocles that had to be painful as ever and the reason for this is because in the movie he played both character he played two characters and um so he, because he was playing a detective and he was also playing the bad guy so he wanted to um, make sure that people could differentiate from the two. And um, from the disguise and, <laughs> yeah, and we only have the disguise Cheney. I tried to find, b before I knew that we only had the, the jagged teeth Cheney. I was looking for Inspector Cheney, and <laughs> it turns out that we only have um, with the top hat and and the the bat wing cloak and <laughs> and everything. Um, as, as it happens in this movie, this is the only movie where his makeup kit shows up. I don't know if it's open. I couldn't find a picture of it. I'm sure it's some floating around somewhere on the internet. But um, somewhere in the movie, his makeup kit shows up. Now, there is a picture of him sh uh, showing his makeup kit. And, of course, that's uh, when he's working on this movie. So, now, as for the movie itself... It's a case of mistaken identity. There's uh, hypnotism. Um, somebody is found dead. And 
Inspector Burke it comes to comes to the scene, and then several years later, at uh, something ha it, it happens again, and yeah, so it it does. Um, of course, put it in the description box so you can read, and it's it's very. Um, kind of a twisty plot, you know, like you would expect for a hypnotism and everything. And um, I wouldn't say Jekyll and Hyde, because I'm sure a lot of people are, oh, just a, another take on Jekyll and Hyde. Not so much. No, I wouldn't say that. I'll let you read it and, and decide from there. And, um, but I do wish that this movie had survived. <laughs> um, it did get amazing reviews when it came out. Um, one review said, uh, a story to disturb the nervous system of the more sensitive picture patrons. <laughs> so yeah, stuff like that makes me wish it, it really did uh, survive. Now, there was a uh, remake. It's called The Mark of the Vampire. It has Lionel Barrymore and Bela Lugosi. Now, so they, they split the characters. Uh, the two characters that Lon Chaney were playing, now two separate actors are playing the characters. And um, one interesting thing that... <laughs> Kind of an odd thing that I found uh, was it said to add an authenticity to Cheney's character and the atmosphere within the haunted scenes, they added bats, armadillos, and owls. Now, I understand the owls and the bats, but I don't understand the armadillos so much. <laughs> Maybe there's something there that I'm missing, but... <laughs> And uh, so, and now this movie has uh, uh, made it in pop culture as well. <laughs> Another Batman. <laughs> uh, with um, Tim Burton's Batman. Uh, Bob Kane uh, remembered talking to Stan Lee when they saw Tim Burton's Batman and uh, in fact it was Batman Returns and said that the penguin reminded them of uh, Lon Chaney's uh, character in in uh, London After Midnight. So uh, so there's another Batman. How many have we got now? We've got, I think, three now. Because <laughs> there's a uh, Zorro is connected to Batman, and we've got uh, uh, Conrad Veet's character uh, is connected to Joker. So how many more silent films are going to be? <laughs> uh uh, Jennifer Kent uh, said that images of Lon Chaney inspired the look of her character, the Babadook. And, uh, and then there was another horror movie. I guess it was The Black Phone. Yeah, the... Uh, poster for 2021 horror film, The Black Phone, have been compared to Cheney. So, um, as a whole, <laughs> this movie is lost, has a huge fan base, um, even for being lost. People are, in, are hoping that it's, there's a copy somewhere. You never know. You know, it, we're, let, let's keep hoping. <laughs> um, but people keep constructing it, you know, 
in the 80s, they constructed it, uh, Turner Classic Movies did a construction with all the pictures that we have and everything. Um, so anyway, this is London After Midnight. It was released in 2000, I mean, 1927. <laughs>